like to join us? We can't do this without you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. May I wish you all a very warm welcome to the beautiful settings here at the Pear Tree for the wedding ceremony of Norman and Evie. I'll very briefly introduce the two of us at this end of the gardens doing all the hard work for the ceremony. So over to my right hand side, you'll see John Dore. He is here as the registrar today and he has a more important task out of the both of us. He's overseeing all the legal aspects of the ceremony, which today include the completion and signing of the marriage schedule, its entry into the marriage register, and he's also watching me very, very closely to make sure I do my job right and send this lovely couple away as a happily married one in the not too distant future. My name is Eleanor Taylor, and I'm a Deputy Superintendent Registrar for the County of Worcestershire. And all that really means, it's my very great privilege and my pleasure to be here to conduct this ceremony for you today. So first of all, I have to tell you that this place in which you're now met has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriage. Your presence as guests has been specially requested by Norman and Evie to listen to them as they take their vows and to watch as they begin their new life together as a married couple. I believe it means a great deal to them both. You're all here today to share the day with them and to help them celebrate, I'm sure, later on. So you are all here to witness the union of Norman Anderson Learmont and Evelyn Lewis. And so I must ask that if any person present knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage, he or she must declare it now, please. No takers? Please. Do you need to wait any longer? <laughs> no? Okay. One of the historic traditions involved in the wedding ceremony is the giving away of the bride. Today, this act is seen as a symbol of support for the marriage and a promise of continuing trust and affection from Evie's family. So, do you, Grant, and do you, Mandy, give Evie to be married here today to Norman? We do. Now, if you would like to present her. Pass a hand over. Thank you very much. Looks stunning. Maybe a handshake for Norman? Looks stunning. It's handshake for Norman, sorry. Handshake <laughs> for Norman and a kiss on the cheek for Evie. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your pick. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Thank you very much, both. Well, before we commence with the formalities of the ceremony today, I would like to invite Valerie forward and she has a reading for us. Hmm? Right, this is, I'm not taking any credit for this. This is an, an anonymous, <laughs> anonymous poem. He never leaves the sea top or wet towels on the floor. The toothpaste has the lid on and he always shuts the door. She's very clean and tidy, though some, she may sometimes delude. Leave your things out at your peril. In a second, they'll be moved. He's a very active person, as are all his next of kin. Whereas she likes lazy days, he'll still drag her to the gym. He romances her and dines her, home-cooked dinners and the like. He even knows her favourite food and spoils her day and night. She's thoughtful when she looks at him. A smile, oh, he's, yeah, she's thoughtful when he looks at her. A smile upon his face. Will you look that good in 70 years? Now his dentures aren't in place. <laughs> he says he loves her figure and her mental prowess too. But now gravity has taken over. Will she charm him with her IQ? <laughs> she says she loves his patience, his kindness, and his patience is a must. And of course, she thinks he's handsome which in her eyes is a plus. They're both not wholly perfect, but who are we to judge? He can be pig-headed, whereas she won't even budge. All that said and done, they love the time they've spent together. And I hope, as I'm sure you all do, that this fine day will last forever. He'll be more than just her husband. He'll also be her friend. And she'll be more than just his wife. She'll be his soulmate till the end. Oh. Thank you, Valerie. I think that one we can credit Pam Ayres with. 
<laughs> Are you two ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, Norman and Evie, today you will exchange vows which will unite you in marriage. The words are a formal and public pledge of your love and a promise of lifelong dedication to one another. Before you are joined in matrimony, it is my duty to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you are about to make. Marriage in this country is the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life and to the exclusion of all others. So I'm now going to ask each of you in turn to declare you do not know of any lawful reason why you should not be married to each other. So Norman, you're first, just repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Norman Anderson Learmont. Why I, Norman Anderson Learmont. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Evelyn Lewis. To Evelyn Lewis. Perfect, well done. And Evie will turn. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not that I know not of any lawful impediment of any lawful impediment why I Evelyn Lewis why I Evelyn Lewis may not be joined in matrimony may not be joined in matrimony to Norman Anderson Learmont to Norman Anderson Learmont perfect well done well, ladies and gentlemen you have heard Norman and Evie declare they are indeed free to marry each other if I can invite you all to stand and support them if you are able please you see, I do, but okay, I'll give you the look. Okay. So Norman and Evie, you have gathered about you those whom you love. You invited them here to receive their encouragement and their support and to celebrate with you at this special time. So I ask you now in the presence of this company, Norman, do you take Evie to be your wife? Do you promise to comfort her and love her? Rejoice with her through good times, support and respect her? And do you promise to remain true to her for the rest of your lives together? I do. Thank you. And Evie, do you take Norman to be your husband? Do you promise to comfort him and love him, rejoice with him through good times, support and respect him? And do you promise to, to remain true to him for the rest of your lives together? I do. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to take your seats, we have a second reading and this one's from Emma, please. A soulmate is someone that has locks to fit our keys and keys to fit our locks. When we feel safe enough to open the locks, our truest selves step out and we can be completely and honestly who we are. We can be loved for who we are and not who we're pretending to be. Each unveils the best part of each other. No matter what goes wrong around us, with that one person, we're safe in our own paradise. Our soulmate is someone who shares our deepest longings our sense of direction. When we're two balloons and together our direction is up, chances are we found the right person. Our soulmate is the one who makes life come to life. Thank you. Well, the moment has now come for Norman and Evie to make their marriage contract with each other. So the next words they say are the words that make them husband and wife. So if you'd like to turn to face each other now, you say these words to each other, you repeat after me, Norman, you're first, but saying these words to your beautiful bride. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Norman Anderson Learmont. To witness that I, Norman Anderson Learmont. Do take thee, Evelyn Lewis. Do take thee, Evelyn Lewis. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Well done, thank you. And Evie, say these words to Norman. Yeah. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Evelyn Lear, sorry, Evelyn Lewis. Maybe. To witness that I, Evelyn Lewis. Do take thee, Norman Anderson Learmont. Do take thee, Norman Anderson Learmont. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Well done, thank you. And now while the couple catch their breath, we have a third reading. This one comes now from Andrew, please. Mm. 
What's Mickey without Minnie? Or Piglet without Pooh? What's Donald without Daisy? That's me without you. When Ariel doesn't sing and Pooh hates honey. When Tigger stops bouncing. When Peter Pan can't fly. And Simba never roars. When Alice no longer fits through small doors. When Dumbo's ears are small. No laughing at Norman's ears, please. <laughs> and happy ever after isn't true, even though I won't stop loving you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Beautifully done again. Thank you. Well, for Norman and Evie, getting married today is a proud confirmation of the love, the respect and the true friendship they very clearly have for one another. Together, they will now be stronger to meet whatever life might hold for them. But marriage is not always an easy path. It requires devotion, the ability to listen, the wisdom to know when we are wrong, looking at neither of you in particular, <laughs> and of course the strength and good humour to put everything right just in case it does. So I'd like to invite Mick forward now as he also has a reading. How do I love thee? Can we count the ways? I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life, and if God choose, I will love thee better after death. Thank you, Mick. We better seal the deal now. So we come to the exchange of rings. This is the traditional way of sealing the vows that have been made. The wedding ring is the unbroken circle that symbolises unending and everlasting love. It's the outward sign of the lifelong promises you two have just made. So if we can have Evie's ring, please. If you present that to Norman. Oh, okay. It's not yours, is it? It's been tied on good and Laura. tight. It's not going anywhere. Laura, it's the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. So if you present that ring to Norman, if you take that from the cushion. Thank you. And onto the third finger of Evie's left hand, about halfway on. Look lovingly into her eyes and say these words. <laughs> Evie, I give you this ring. Evie, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. Of my, a symbol of my love. I promise to cherish you. I promise to cherish you. Comfort you and care for you. Comfort you and care for you. For as long as I live. For as long as I live. And like a gentleman, slide that all the way onto her finger, please. Like a gentleman, Norman. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Beautifully done. Okay. Um, if you'd like to present Evie with Norman's ring, please. Sorry, Thank you. Thank you, girls. You can have your seats. Thank you. So, third thing. Oh, she's keen. She didn't need any prompting there. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't say these words. Yeah. Told Done it ring. before, and she. <laughs> Norman, I give you this ring. Norman, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. I promise to cherish you. I promise to cherish you. Comfort and care for you. Comfort and care for you. For as long as I live. For as long as I live. And rough as you like, get that all the way on, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> it went on really easily. <laughs> Lovely. And if you two would like to stay holding hands, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to hold hands with the person next to you, Now these are the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours on your wedding day. 
as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and cherish you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold you when fear or grief fills your mind. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These are the hands that will help you to hold your family as one. These are the hands that will give you strength when you need it. And lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours, still giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just one touch. Norman and Evie. You have now both made the declarations prescribed by law. You've made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of all of your family, friends and witnesses gathered here for you today. You have exchanged and accepted rings as a further token of the commitment you've made and the future you have. So let us hope that today forms just a milestone in your lives but you actually look back upon it with much love and happiness. And the feelings of love you have today will deepen and grow ever stronger throughout the years of fun and games I'm sure you have lying ahead. <laughs> Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to declare that Norman and Evie, you are at long last husband and wife. Did you get the kiss? Yes, I did. You got the kiss. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be entertained beautifully by Kringo Blue now, whilst the schedule is complete and signed. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. If you want to come and take a seat here. If I told you lately that I if I told you there's no one else above Fill my heart with gladness Take away all my sadness Ease my troubles, that's what you do For the morning sun and all well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you can tell the formal proceedings are pretty much over. In a moment, I'll be sending our lovely couple out so you can all celebrate with them. But before they go, I've got one very important question to ask you all. Now, has Evie bagged herself a romantic man in Norman? No. <laughs> well, that was a rousing chorus of no, Norman. Well, I think we need to uh, do a bit better than that today. So, I actually think he's a bit more romantic than we're crediting him for, because normally we have to do our bride and groom a little swapsy round at this point in proceedings, but just because of his inner romantic man, he knows where to hold his bride. And it is traditionally this way round. It goes back to the days of knights and castles and dragons, when the groom as a knight would have had a sword arm free to defend the honour of his new bride. When registration first started, it was 1837. We've just celebrated our 185th civil registration anniversary uh, back at the start of July. At that time, medical research, there is a link, but go with me, uh, was in its infancy, but they had established that your heart was towards the left-hand side in your chest. And so, Norman, you have your new wife closest to your heart. Please keep her there today and the rest of your days together as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand once more and give a rapturous welcome to the new Mr. and Mrs. Learmont. Thank you. 